Welcome back now to our next uh, conversation. Well, a lot is happening in the agricultural space with uh, uh, geopolitical tensions between Russia and Ukraine impacting uh, agricultural commodities. And uh, right here in Nigeria, we also have the recent ban on foreigners buying produce directly from uh, farmers in Nigeria, amongst uh, other issues. I will have uh, African farmer Morgaji join us on the program, former chairman, Agri Group, LCCI. Great to have you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yeah, so uh, uh, before this uh, ban, could you paint a picture, you know, the procedures, you know, in, uh, buying agricultural produce from farmers? Okay, um, so 30, 40 years ago, um, you had government structures functional that you would get to the farmers through the agencies, quarantine, extension services. You know, you had structures functional, um, but... 30 years, 40 years back now, it's free for all. Everybody, you know, penetrates the farm, which is primarily a function of government infrastructure not available. You know, in every local government, before you move your farm produce to the other, there are certifications already gotten before. There are levies paid, you know, but all those is out now. So really, nobody is looking after the farmers. The foreigners are the ones that are looking after the farmers. By buying directly from them? By buying directly from them, by giving them uh, insecticides so that they can even have a crop, by giving them credit for fertilizers. Government is not doing that. Most of the private sector is not doing that. They can't afford it. The private sector can't afford it because of the cost of funds. So bottom line is there, there's an organization that used to be called Sibagegi. They produce agrochemicals. You know, many of them, they're 50 years in the country supporting the value chain of the farmers. The farmers depend on them to have a crop to even sell at all. So when we hear that there's a ban now, who is going to fit that structure? But well, the concern is that uh, the farmers are being shortchanged. So, you know, <laughs> w when I heard the ban, I laughed and almost cried. I laughed because I said, do these people know how the structure works in reality for 50 years? Now the farmers, so what the, what the local uh, players don't like, and some of them, is that the foreigners come, they change the money black market, so they have more money. The local people here don't have that kind of money. The cost of funds, the bank funding them, it doesn't come on time. The foreigners come early in the season to mop up. So the, the local players are at a disadvantage. But using the farmers as, you know, the bait to say we want to help the farmers, no. It pays the farmers for the people to buy directly from them. Why? Because the foreigners want to buy and they buy at a higher price. So they increase the price, so it pays the farmer. But when the local buyer is the one buying, it doesn't pay the farmer. So there's no, you're telling me there's no, <laughs> you know, some kind of shortchanging going on. Yes, there's shortchanging some going on. Some get cheated. Yes, but the farmers get the cash, and they get it at, because there's more competition coming into the farmers right now. But the local buyers, the local businesses who do export, they are the ones that have a challenge. So it's not primarily the foreign buyers. It's for government to support, to make sure that they, they are financially buoyant and stable to be able to compete. So when you're buying dollar at a price and somebody is bringing dollar and selling, um, and selling to in here at a black market. So already that person is, you know, has one advantage. So it's always alarming when we always have this ban, ban, ban. Ban has not worked. I don't know when we're going to open our hearts and our eyes to banning. The farmer pays for the bans. What is going to happen? So I heard the minister say, um, during the video on Twitter, saying that they will put in the structure and mechanism they will put it in. Why don't you put it in before you ban it? You see, there's um, Russia-Ukraine uh, war currently going on, affecting food prices. 
And so what, we should, what I expect the minister to be talking about, because I'm grounded in foreign policy, is for the minister to go online and begin to say, Nigeria open to collaborate with Europe to meet its food needs. That's what the Minister of Trade and Investment should be talking about. Sending a positive message. Have a meeting for, with the Minister of um, a Foreign Minister and, and, and just give the Europeans the confidence because they are already afraid of Russia. But can we plug this uh, gap? Really? See, so take for instance, Ukraine supplies over 50% of world um, sunflower oil. Sunflower Gombe is a leading sunflower producer. Sunflower glow grows in every state of the nation. Now, the Minister of Trade and Investment, the Minister of Agriculture, Foreign Minister, need to have a meeting and begin to push this out. We need to have a policy, you know, change into that direction. India buys 100% of their sunflower oil from Ukraine. So India is already a trading partner with Nigeria. These are things that they ought to talk about. The farmers now, vegetable oil, the prices will go higher because there's no sunflower oil moving from Ukraine to India. You know, corn, there are a lot of things that we need to be talking about. The farmers will pay for this thing dearly now because now they need to get licenses. It's not clear how you get the license. The power sector that they got licenses, we've not gotten power. So bottom line is that now, the Europeans will say, we want to work with licensed people. And how are we sure that the people who ought to get the license, the current players, are the ones that will get the licenses? So again, the farmers will pay for this. Because now we've been getting you know, mixed reactions you know, about this. Some say this will actually constrain you know, the market. And uh, yes, I saw that uh, All Farmers Association of Nigeria uh, said they're actually lauding you know, this ban. So, so, all farmers association may not like what I'm about to say. Almost all the executives, and I have friends there, almost all the executives are not full-time farmers. The chairman, National uh, All Farmers Association, good man, is an architect. He has something else to fall back on. Almost all the executives have something to fall back on. I'm a full-time farmer. I only make money um, from talking outside the core farming. So when the people who, whose economy will be affected directly become the people at the elm of this affair, then you know, they will ensure policies. They would go after negotiating with government or lobbying government. But when you have people whose inflow, direct inflow, uh, bread and butter is not directly from farming, it won't work so they can talk. But will it, does it pinch them? No, no. I have rented one of a state chairman of an association. When this administration funding, I have rented the farm. In the year the government was making provision, seeds, chemical, the chairman did not farm. I rented the farm in a particular northern state. So bottom line is that until we have the real players, we will do all we using the farmers to give us some uh, wicked policies. The corn policy ban was reversed in 45 days because the people who advise the presidency or the president does not have that grassroots. Now, over 50%, I stand to be corrected, over 50% of the poultry in this country is finished. A core friend of mine who's been doing poultry for years ended up selling minerals, drinks, salt drinks last year. Wow. You know, so all these policies that just come, this policy that, you know, was just put in place now, when it comes, it's not holistic. When it comes to like cashew, cocoa, cola, um, cola nut, yes. But when it comes to ugu, the fresh vegetables, that is from farm, you take it directly. Do we have the plant quarantine? Is government funding plant quarantine? Who ideally should work with the farmer from seed to, to harvest? So. That policy does not pay attention to those people. They only pay attention to the other one. And the fresh market is on the increase now. So bottom line is we're sending a, a, a wrong message. It's killing the farmers. It's, the more you try to scale in this country, it's as if you know, the Asurok, you know, demons just calm down. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. the small scale, yeah. the cottage industry, will feel this. Poultry, the crop farmers this year will be in for it because 
Now if you send a threat that don't give the credit to the farmers to buy seed fertilizers, nobody is giving the tree crops, the permanent crops, the cash crops. Nobody is giving them facility. There's no anchor borrower as laudable as it. There's no anchor borrower for cashew. There's no anchor borrower for cocoa. So it is these guys that have been funding it for years. You know, it's frustrating for many I of us. I can imagine. I can imagine. All right, let's uh, look at, uh, you know, wheat. Now, obviously, mm. uh, we, we're, we're seeing the, uh, supply disruptions uh, there um, right now. And now we've seen a couple of countries actually banning exports. Like, mm. we've seen Egypt, actually. And, and now the word uh, food protectionism is, is being thrown around now. So uh, what do you think about this? First and foremost, did we learn from COVID? That's the first thing because all countries decided not to export because they weren't sure of how long uh, the pandemic will keep everybody indoors. What have we done? The wheat that we're talking about now, Russia produces 20% globally. Um, Ukraine does 10%. 70% of Russia's um, wheat comes to Africa and East Asia. Nigeria tops in the purchase, about $1.2 billion. Now, the challenge now is last year, um, CBM began the wheat pilot program, imported seeds, and you know they made it online that they imported the seeds. This year, federal government released wheat seed. There was no collaboration. If not, we ought to be scaling the locally bred wheat by our researchers. The imported wheat, you're not sure if it will fully adapt, adapt or be adopted to our soil. So bottom line is that it's not looking good. Next 90 days, in fact, 30 to 45 days, wheat, pasta, noodles, name it, and even corn. Currently, as you and I are having a conversation, last year, um, Russia stopped um, uh, exporting urea to US, which is used for nitrogen fertilizers. China also joined. So already 2022, 2023, corn is going to be expensive. Corn is currently sold at 180 to 200 to 220. It used to be 40,000 Naira at this time. So 2022 now, we're not going to have, US is not going to produce enough corn. The farmers are even crying in the US. Russia is not exporting. China buys 29% of their corn from Ukraine. So what does that, what, as we talk now, chicken is going to go high, eggs is going to go high, corn syrup. Most of our medicines is they use corn starch. So as we speak now, we need to be hearing a lot of, you know, the, the, the ministers talking big. Even if we don't have the structure, talk big. Europe wants to invest now. But unfortunately, it is farmer, farmer, the, the low things that we're talking about. So wheat, there's going to be a huge challenge. However, you see, um, there's, an op there's always opportunity in adversity. Exactly. So we need to look into our wheat. It's never too late to change direction. We need to look into our wheat right now. We need to re-embrace our cassava. Cassava prices this year ought to be very low. The, the price went between 100% to 200% last year. So the people rushed into it. So there's supposed to be glut this year. But with this Russian war, the cassava um, starch um, floor would embrace it. So government needs to look into engaging um, the processors so that the inclusion that was done during President Obasanjo's administration, we need to revisit it and make it permanent. But not to impose on the, the manufacturers, but to have a conversation. Now they will talk to you. They will come to the table. But we need to be looking at the future, right. not going back. Because there's also talk about uh, looming you know, food crisis uh, globally right now. All right, uh, Mr. Africa Farmer, thank you so much. Former chairman, Agri Group, LCCI. Uh, thank you for coming on the program. I hope you don't go hungry. I, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs>